section 3.3.3-T. Now often, frequency distributions are reported using unequal class widths because the frequencies of some groups would otherwise be small or very large. Consider the following data, which represent the daytime household temperature the thermostat is set to when someone is home for a random sample of 771 households. Determine the class midpoint, if necessary, for each class and then approximate the mean and standard deviation temperature. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a table. So you can see here that on the left hand side we have our temperature and here is the classes. Okay, and then we have our frequency, so the frequency is also given here. Okay, now again the first thing we want to do is we always want to find the sum of the frequencies. So when we add up 29 all the way to 44, it's going to give us the following. Okay, so it's going to say the sum of all the frequencies is equal to 771. Okay, now we're going to create two columns to approximate the mean. So the first thing we need to do is make a column for a midpoint, and then the next column is taking the midpoint and multiplying it by its frequency. Okay, now to find the midpoint, okay, we need to take a look at the two lower class limits. Okay, so the lower class limits is 61 and 65. So 61 plus 65 divided by 2 gives us 63. And so then we're going to take the midpoint of 63, and then we're going to multiply it by the frequency of 29 to get 1,827. Okay, next. The next midpoint is going to be between 65 and 68. So we're going to take 65 plus 68 and divide it by 2 to get 66.5. So we're going to get 66.5 and then we're going to multiply it by the frequency of 73 to get 4854.5. Okay, next we have the lower class limits of 68 and 70. So 68 plus 70 divided by 2 is going to give us 69. So the midpoint is 69 and we're going to multiply it by the frequency of 203 to get the total of 14,007. Okay, next. The next two lower class limits are going to be 70 and 71. So 70 plus 71 divided by 2 is going to give us 70.5. So we're going to take that 70.5 and then we're going to multiply it by the frequency of 205 and that's going to give us a result of 14,452.5. Okay, next. The next two lower class limits are going to be 71 and 73. So 71 plus 73 and then dividing that by 2 gives us 72. So 72 represents the midpoint. And then we're going to multiply it by the frequency of 126 to give us a result of 9,072. Okay, next. The next two lower class limits are going to be 73 and 77. So 73 plus 77 divided by 2 gives us 75. So now we know the midpoint is going to be 75. We're going to multiply it by the frequency of 91 to get the result of 6825. Okay, now the next thing we need to do, we need to find out what is the next midpoint. Okay, so we need to figure out what is the next lower limit of the class. Well since this ends at 80 that means this is going to start at 81. So that tells us that the lower class limit for that next class is going to be 81 even though we don't know what the upper class is. So what we can do is we can say okay we're going to now find the midpoint between 77 and 81. So 77 plus 81 divided by 2 gives us 79. So we know that 79 is going to be the midpoint. And then we're going to multiply it by the frequency of 44 to get the result of 3,476. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we know that the total of the frequencies is 771. So that means in the formula we know that the denominator is going to represent the total number of the frequency. Okay, and now what we need to do is we need to find the total of this class here. So the last column, we want to add up 1,827 plus 4,854.5 all the way down to 3,476. 3, so that's going to give us a total of 
514, which represents our numerator. So when we solve, okay, we can see that our numerator is 54,514. We can also see the denominator is going to be 771, which is the sum of the frequencies. Okay, so when we divide that, we end up getting the following. We end up getting 70.70557711. But they want us to round this to one decimal place. So we're going to say that the sample mean is approximately 70.7. Okay, so now that we found the sample mean, now we want to be able to locate and find the sample standard deviation. So the first thing we need to do now is we're going to create three more columns. The first column is going to represent the sample mean. The next column represents the midpoint minus the sample mean. And the last column is taking the value we get in this column, squaring it, and then multiplying it by its frequency. So the first thing we need to do is we can go ahead and then input the sample mean. Well, what do we find the sample mean here? Well, the sample mean we end up finding is 70.7. .7. So what that means is we're going to put in our column of 70.7 .7 for each row. Okay, and now in the next column what we're going to do is we're going to take the midpoint which we have is 63 and then we're going to subtract the sample mean of 70.7 .7 to get the value of negative 7.7. .7. And then in the next column, we're going to take that negative 7.7, .7, we're going to square it, and then multiply it by the frequency of 29 to get 1719.41. Okay, next. The next midpoint is 66.5. And then we're going to subtract the sample mean of 70.7 .7 to get negative 4.2. In the next column, we're going to take that negative 4.2 and square it, and then multiply it by its frequency of 73 to get 1,287.72. Next, we're going to take the next midpoint, which is 69, and then we are going to subtract the sample mean of 70.7 to get negative 1.7. In the next column, we're going to take that negative 1.7 and square it, and then multiply by its frequency of 203 to get 586.67. Okay, next. The next midpoint is 70.5. And then we're going to subtract the sample mean of 70.7 to get us negative 0.2. So we're going to take the negative 0.2 in the next column and then square it and then multiply by its frequency of 205 to get 8.2. Next, the next midpoint is 72 and then we're going to subtract the sample mean of 70.7 to get 1.3. So we're going to take that 1.3 in the next column and then square it and then multiply by its frequency of 126 to get the total of 212.94. Okay, next, we're going to take the midpoint of 75, and then we're going to subtract the sample mean of 70.7 to get 4.3. And then we're going to take that 4.3 and square it, and then multiply by its frequency of 91 to get the total of 1,682.59. Okay, next, the last midpoint is 79, and then we're going to again subtract the sample mean of 70.7 .7 to get 8.3, and then 8.3 in the next column, we're going to square it, and then multiply by its frequency of 44 to get the value of 3,031 and 16.16, okay? So, again, let's take a look at the formula here. So, the formula for the sample standard deviation is taking the sum of the last column and then dividing it by the sum of the frequency minus 1. Now, the sum of the last column is what we have in the numerator. So, if you take a look here, okay, we can see that when we add up this last column, we add up all these numbers to get 8,500. 
0.69. Okay, so what that's going to do is that's going to represent our numerator. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to divide it by the sum of the frequency minus 1. Well, the sum of the frequencies is 771, and then we're going to subtract 1. So we're going to take the square root of 8,528.69 and divide it by 770, which gives us 3.32809566. And then we're going to round that sample standard deviation to one decimal place. So the standard deviation is going to be 3.3.